So, it's a story you want then. Tales of moonlit cities and pools from beyond not enough for you? Well, I might have a tale for you then. One that takes place in our very own Willard's Rest. A tale of the amber-ridden belly of the mines twisting beneath that dying and cursed town. Of Fort Calamity and its despotic tenants. And the hold they had over the meek and the mild. I could tell you about the churning metal beast of technological wonder set to cross the ocean itself, the man full of hatred and ambition set to ride that beast into his destiny. And I could tell you about the knights wielding six iron steel that would ride out to face him. Well then, if all that sounds mighty interesting, I implore you to drink deep of my little tall tale. The Ballad of Bonnie O'Donoghue. town named after a settler brave enough to carve a settlement just on the edge of that creeping, consuming fog, right where the hills that nestled it, right where they peak, you could gaze into the forest of abomination shambling within. But the hills of Willard's Rest were rich, a fact that wouldn't come to light until the first miners struck into blooming orange light. Hailstone. They call it. The fancy scholars down south may have had their own name for it, but whatever it was, it was valuable. And buyers were very, very interested in partaking. The town was bustling, thriving, despite the harsh conditions of the valley. And with the newly constructed Fort Calamity at the top of the hill, the people saw no need to worry, only to dig deeper and deeper. That is, until the man with the rattlesnake smile arrived. A posse of gunmen armed to the teeth with iron that made the sheriffs look like a pea shooter. Handsome, suave, dark skin, head full of well groomed tight curls. He talked smooth and charismatic like, and by the end of it, he only had to fire his gun once. Poor old Willard's rest rested right in his palm. Now, town ain't doing so good. Hellstone mining ain't so much a passionate vocation rather than your ticket to surviving. You would mine and mine all day, day in, day out, just to get enough to feed you and your family, and when you couldn't mine no more, you weren't of any more use. Five years have passed. The hellstone kept coming and the mines only got deeper. 
a few had rode into town, bounty hunters looking to take that chunk of gold tied to his head. Only one of them ever rode back out. And so, when five figures crested that hill and rode down the thoroughfare, pulling in looks from every darn direction, people knew there was trouble afoot. Hitching their horses, three would walk into the only saloon in town. The sound of a jaunty old piano singing out of tune in the corner. The inside packed with those folks close to that man, all armed to the teeth and too drunk for an afternoon of good decisions. two-story bar with broken windows and half-hanging shutters, packed to the brim with people downing dark ales, dealing cards, and do si with working girls. Half of the folk here are using whatever they earned in the mines to drink an ache or pain they acquired down there away. The other half, laughing and laughing about a purse stolen, stagecoach robbed, or a would-be vigilante shot down. The saloon doors swing open. And standing in the early afternoon light that pours into the saloon itself, everyone kind of goes quiet. As a shorter figure, armed to the teeth, makes her way inside. Michelle, if you'd like to give a description of your character for us, please. Absolutely. My name's Charlotte. Um, I'm 5'2", if you're counting. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm a purple tiefling. I got pretty purple horns, and my hair is really long and white. Um, My eyes are just white. I'm wearing all white, because what my mama made me. I got a white corset with flowers all over it, it's lace, and a puffy white shirt, and then a long skirt bustled at the sides, you can see my leg. (laughs) Little skin action. (laughs) (laughs) And I got my good old cowboy boots on. Okay. In contrast to her, the shadow of a much larger man just walks behind her. You can see just it's a smoke rising off of you. If you'd like to give an introduction of your character. Well, hello, my name is Xander. I am approximately about 6'5", though admittedly I have not measured in a while. (laughs) (laughs) It's hard to find people taller than me to check it, you know? How am I supposed to That's measure so myself? That's fair, yeah. I'm in a respectable garb of a nice fitted tan button down and a nice amber colored vest. I've got tiny little round glasses and a string around my neck to keep them in place. I got a nice black tie that my mama helped me tie this morning. <laughs> and then- <laughs> <laughs> And some well-fitting slacks that maybe they are getting a little too short around my ankles because they show off my little boots. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, I love his little boots. (laughs) I got nice dark red hair and some beautiful brown eyes. At least that's what my mama told me. Good for you and your mama. And finally, last but certainly not least, there is... An aura of intimidation that fills the bar. And for a second, you can't really tell where it comes from. At first, the young lady comes in with guns fully visible and carrying this indiscernible energy. And then you think, no, it must be the tall fella. It's huge. No gun on him, but maybe he's just that confident. When the third figure strolls in, 
There's no doubt. Chris, if you'd like to describe your character for us. Oh, I'd love to. The name's Devlin. Devlin Sharp. You can call me Dev if you want. I am, well, to a stranger I look like an elf. Pale white skin. Dark, short hair. I got all black, leather, belts, and a big fringe jacket that hangs off my shoulders, and a uh, hat to match it, and uh, about 6'3". I'm kind of tall, not quite as tall as our friend, but I've got uh, dark pitch black eyes that have nothing but a single dot of white, which you assume is my pupil. (laughs) (laughs) Some pretty dark makeup. And on my neck, you can see a pretty little tattoo of a rattlesnake with its head flared, mouth open wide. And that tattoo travels down my shirt into, well, you don't really know how far it goes. (laughs) You can ask me, maybe find out. <laughs> hey, oh, yo. Shit. hey, yo. <laughs> let's, one last thing, let's go around real quick. Uh, pronouns for each of your characters, just for the people at home. So we'll go in the order that we went. So She, they. Right? He, him, bo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they, sometimes he. All right, you got it. As you three stroll up into a saloon that y'all have never been in before... There's immediately an air of tension. From around you, figures in these sort of trench coats and their wide brim hats, some of them hanging off the neck, some of them, you know, rested on the chair. They're immediately looking at you. From the second story railing where they were all chatting up all the way to the poker table in the back at the bar, there's all eyes on you all of a sudden. An immediate pressure. Well, I know I'm beautiful, but come on, (laughs) y'all. Little lady, I don't know if they're looking at you. Why not? (laughs) The rest of them sort of... They turn and start talking to each other again every so often, taking a glance back as they are just laughing to themselves slightly under their breath and... There is a immediate sense of being in hostile territory, as you were warned by your employer that you would be. You see, your employer and their partner, they are going to be coming in a little bit later. And when they show up, things are going to kick off. But your job until then is to gather information about the man who runs this town. Where he lives, what he's doing here, and his plans with some of the newer additions to the town that your employer didn't recognize. So, as you all get in there, into the saloon, you can see that there is a bar up against the wall um, on the left side of the bar. There is a sort of poker table that is positioned... um, sort of off to the right, along with stairs that lead up and split left and right to do like a little balcony area where people are conversing. And there's people that are getting back to dancing around what looks to be a small band on the fiddle and drums that are all over there on like a small makeshift stage. People are tossing in coins and such. Where are y'all headed first? I think I'm gonna go get a drink. This early in the day? <laughs> well, well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I, I don't know. I just feel like drinking should be reserved for for the night time when they, when everyone is is all the people who don't need to be drinking are in bed and the people who do need to be drinking are safe. So I don't know. I just feel. I mean, I, I guess if I can't stop you, little lady, if you want to go drinking, I'll be fine. I'm just gonna go talk to some people and see what I can get, you know, information wise. So you're heading off to the bar. Devlin, where are you headed? There's a poker table. There's a band. 
Um, <laughs> there is a balcony where there seems to be more people that are just chatting up, uh, you know, people that are um, there for companionship, quote unquote. Wait, actually, I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there are some people that are working here, you know, yeah. dressed in, in a bit more revealing clothing mm-hmm. that are chatting people Let's up go. with smiles on their faces. Uh, Xander? I'm going to go watch the band. Go watch the band. Okay. Mm-hmm. You three all split off together you can still feel eyes on you but things are kind of settling down uh let's go ahead and start with charlotte you make your way to the edge of the bar you can see that it's well stocked with different alcohols and such um man running the bar is an elven man blonde hair it's thinning at the top um he's got a thin pair of cracked glasses on as he's polishing a mug he looks over at you and says Oh, well, welcome in. Uh, Howdy. You're new around these parts, I can see. Uh, you're a bit, uh, this is really no place for fine folk like y'all. Oh, stop. <laughs> you can see he's kind of sweating a little bit. <laughs> um, and he says, can I get you something to drink? The strongest drink you got. Oh, all right. I'm a little more adventurous than I would have paid for, but <laughs> sure. All right, all right. We Thank got some you. for you. Um, you see him sort of turn around and start reaching for a I drink. I kind of, like, lean over on the counter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a little, like, you know, sensual. Um, is there anyone, um, of interest at the bar? Like, is there anyone sitting there that I'm like, you're attractive? Taking a look <laughs> around the bar. Um, you don't actually have to make a perception check for this, but uh, if you want, you could try and get a better roll by doing like read or survey or something like that i'll get a i'll get a read get a read okay um this is a controlled standard role i'm going to explain what that means as we go we are using a different system for this game which i will tell you about more in the break but uh basically we're using the forge in the dark system uh fistful of darkness uh for this so right now you're rolling d6s so how many dots you got none none okay (laughs) so you would roll 2d6. And take the lowest one. And right? take the lowest. But it's controlled, so the consequences won't be bad. Uh-huh. You could push yourself to get one more, but honestly, you know. Or you could take a Devil's Bargain if you want to make one with me to get an extra dice. Sure. The Devil's Bargain would be that if you find someone of interest, they're going to notice you right back. Oh. Maybe that's not such a bad thing. <laughs> it's, not, yeah. it's just an interesting thing. It is interesting. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. So, one dice. Just right. one dice. One to three is a failure. Four to five is a success with consequences. And six, six. is a success. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> is that the first roll of the game? Yep. And she looks very pretty today. <laughs> she has all her necklace and all, all her jewelry. She's sparkly. Okay. Immediately, uh, what you can tell as you're looking around the bar is that there are many of these people wearing semi the same thing. They all have these kind of amber devil type insignias on their trench coat or on their person, on their vest somewhere. And that's the only thing that unites them. And you see a lot of them. Do I and recognize it or do I not? Like, okay. At this point, you would recognize this symbol being the gang that you are looking for as O'Donagan members from all around are browsing, just drinking the day away your eye would immediately be caught by a kind of larger figure that sat at the end of the bar, drinking alone mostly. They also have like a large, much larger trench coat on with the O'Donagan insignia. They're someone you probably haven't seen before, or some person that you haven't seen before, as they have the head of a bull and the body to match this sort of wide built body as well a uh let's call him a minotaur person if you will if you may or may not have met someone she kind of is just drinking alone sipping on a a tough whiskey puts it down and then immediately as she catches your eye you catch her eye as she kind of looks over towards you, smiles, and then looks and says, Hey, bartender. That drink for her? Um, 
he says, uh, uh, why, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, Miss, Miss Kale, this drink is for her. And it says, it's on me. The Minotaur turns, looks to you, some light smile, and then sort of just tips the hat. Oh, you didn't have to do all that. You're new in town, right? Yes. You see that the people between you and her notice that she's talking and just instinctually, like, get out of the way. <laughs> um, as uh, she just kind of gets up, you know, her form is huge. She's like... <laughs> Same height as Xander, probably at this point. She just kind of like <laughs> hooved, hooved feet make her way over, not getting right up next to you, but just kind of sitting on the same area along with you. She kind of leans back on the bar stool, and brings you to this sorry den of sin and villainy. Oh, you know, a couple jobs here and there, nothing crazy, just getting a feel for it. Ah, I see. Jobs that take you out to fully dressed. I mean, that usually leans into the perfumes of Bounty Hunter. A what? (laughs) 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 No, I'm just, um, you know, I don't want to think of what. You could always ask for another mechanic, a flashback, and consult somebody in the past of what should we say if someone asks us what we're doing here that sort of thing okay yeah sure we'll go into a flashback 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 so with the flashback <laughs> i'll have some kind of cue that we're in a flashback so triggering a flashback this is a really simple one it's gonna cost you zero grit to just a day ago as the plan was coming up the question was sort of arose naturally and what do we do if someone asks what we're doing in this town And the response you were given was, listen, (laughs) bounty hunters aren't looked upon quite favorably. A very stern and um, smooth voice kind of replies back to you from the haze. So, if you are going out to the press, um, just say that you heard that there are plenty of positions in the mines or for prospect in the area. Back to present day. She's waiting on an answer. I'm just doing some prospecting for the mines. <laughs> oh, God. a little confused by this answer. It's a uh, sick pro- prospect. So you want to yeah, in the- um, so what are, you, what are you doing in here? <laughs> You well, come around uh, here often? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could say that. It's kind of a big shot around here. Ooh. Don't mean to do my own horn. Toot toot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am the... But uh, honestly, it's more of a glorified ringleader at this point for this pack of wild animals. So... Like oh, real yeah. wild animals? Hmm? Like like real wild animals? You're fun. <laughs> yeah, I wish I was working with real wild animals. No, they'd be a little bit more well-mannered and a little less smelly. <clears throat> she looks around at the rest of the O'Donigan members and then just kind of... Oh, like these yeah. people. Yeah. Oh, they are kind of smelly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> You're telling me. Um, we will continue with that conversation. Uh, we're going around. Um, making your way up the stairs, Devlin. Yeah. You are seeing that hanging off the railing, sort of you hooing down at the patrons who are, you know, hooting and hollering back up. Uh, you can see uh, men and women dressed a little more scantily clad, um, more display of musculature and more display of skin. Uh, implying that, you know, they're here for companionship with these people. Um, and as soon as you sort of crest the stairs, you see that there is sort of a, a, a muscular man who just kind of immediately is leaning over and says, hello, <laughs> um, looking at you. <sighs> Fresh meat in town, I see. Um, I've got it. I'm doing a similar tactic to Charlotte. Charlotte, <laughs> I'm going to... Sure. 
Be my uncle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's like, these cats are cooking. <laughs> these cats are really cooking. <laughs> Continue. So. Yeah, I'll mm-hmm. lean against the railing and. uh. What brings you in? Just a little bit of, you know, business. I see. A bit early for companionship in the night, but uh, never mm-hmm. we're going to turn down a good conversation partner. <laughs> what about you? You, uh,. Like your job? Having fun? Makes good money. And, you know, despite the smell of some of the clientele, they're nice enough folk. These motherfuckers need a shower. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) the second time someone's called them stinky. Damn, they got a But yeah, no, they pay well enough. And they, you know, they're not too, uh, you know, they're nice folk, despite the rough exterior, I guess. Plus, it's better than being out in any other town and getting robbed by him, so. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you yep. probably uh, hear a lot about what goes on around here, don't you? Well, if you're talking about gossip or you need to uh, hear about the town, I suppose that I do know some things, though talking about it might be a little dangerous. Mm. So doing it for free might not be in my best interest. Oh, of course. I was fully intending on paying you. <laughs> Why don't we have a chat then? Sure. Um, you see, he kind of reaches out. Uh, well, actually, yeah, he kind of puts his arm out to be sort of taken. Just sort of go to a, a, like a sitting room, basically, to talk. Basically. I will. If it, yeah, I'll take, take his arm. Put him through his. You begin to walk. Uh, <laughs> I so give it a squeeze. <laughs> it's a bicep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll get to the okay. gathering information phase uh, in a bit as he is just kind of leaning on you and laughing um, with you as he's asking more and more questions about where you're from, you know, how, how you came to roll into town. And we'll get to those in just a bit as we move down <laughs> to a completely different situation. <laughs> There's a band that's got a, a good old uh, piano that is leading along. You can hear there, see there's some people with, you know, makeshift drums, like sitting on top of like buckets and stuff and just like smacking on them. Um, uh, uh, and um, people that are just gathering around hooting and hollering dancing in this small kind of contained area as you have kind of wa- come up to watch, which not many people are just watching. So you're just kind of this big person, like standing on the dance floor a little bit as Aww. people are kind of swing dancing around. <laughs> what are you doing, Xander? Xander is going to come up and he's going to he's gonna watch the band a little bit, but um, he's going to see if, if uh, any, anybody else is just standing around. Um, let's see. Anyone else is standing around? Or is he bumping anyone interesting? Uh, here's, here's what would happen. Um, as you are kind of, uh, standing there, um, you can see that trying to make your way through the crowd with two trays of glasses, trying to distribute them to, you know, standing tables that are around the dance floor. Um, there is a younger girl with this sort of reddish hair, um, this tanner skin. Um, who is like, oh, excuse me, uh, please, and sort of putting down glasses. And as she's getting close to you, um, she doesn't expect a, a solitary monument of a man to just be standing there. And she just kind of bumps into you as she's like, whoa, whoa, and starting to fall backwards. What do you do? Uh, he's gonna, he's gonna reach out and try to catch her, grab her by the waist so she doesn't fall, or grab her tray or something. Sure. A Give jam. me. Uh, do you have a skill that you'd like to attach to this? I would like to maybe see if I can like read and see if I can catch her like, before she yeah, loses before her she, full yeah. footing. Yeah, of course. I, I'll let that happen. Sure. Give me your yeah. roll. Six. Six. That's a success. As Not you are success. able to catch her. Not only catch her, you're able to catch her tray too. Wow. Um, as she's holding on to the other one, just oh my. I am so sorry about that, sir. Oh, um, my bad, little lady. I was just standing right here in your way. Um, I just got so caught up. This is my favorite band. Oh, yes. really? Yeah, it's Stinky Joe with his <laughs> Bandit of Goons. <laughs> <laughs> They're a travel the night. Stinky Joe, good old Stinky Joe. I didn't know that they had a name, but I guess they do just kind of show up, and I guess they are a little stinky. Uh, I... Can I can I help you pass these out? I mean, I guess I'm I'm not really doing much, but 
This isn't really my scene. You don't mind? I I don't mind at all. Why are you, gentlemen? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you could, I'd just have a few drinks, and then, you know, I think, uh, for now, that should keep them handy. Why don't we pass these out, man? Yeah. Okay. You begin to pass out drinks around the high-top tables, um, putting down mugs and such. Um, you do catch some information, though, while you're doing this with this access to these conversations. And people are a little bit like, whoa, who's the big fellow who's just showing up <laughs> giving drinks? But as soon as you hand them a drink, they're like, oh, nice. <laughs> like a new hey, and I'm started you. drinking uh, their, uh, their beer. Um, you do catch some conversation. And there's just grumblings around. Apparently things have been getting quite serious around here. Apparently that, you know. The quotas the for the mines, from what you can hear, you can hear people grumbling about quotas doubling, things that need to be done on the deadline before the train gets in, things like that. You are just picking up little bits and pieces of information before you finally finish up. Um, and the little lady comes up and she takes a train and says, thank you for all your help. That that was I'm not very used to that kind of kindness and politeness around here. So it's kind of a breath of fresh air. It's just what my mama taught me. My mama also taught me to ask a pretty lady her name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my All god. Right. Everyone's so smooth. Good god. Well, uh, uh, Annabelle, but you can call me Belle. Belle's a beautiful name. Thank you. And yours, good sir. Oh, well, my name is Alexander, but I go by Xander. Xander? That is a fun name. Well, Xander, I am going to be serving drinks around here, but, uh, you ever find yourself lacking in someone to talk to and just want to talk to a busy little busy little body like me then you know where to find me just look for red hair oh i will she smiles she makes her way back to the bar where charlotte and wow. this tenant of the donegan oh, shit. are speaking <laughs> as she has leaned Damn. in with the drinks and uh, is kind of talking a little bit uh, to you and saying uh, it sort of brings up what you had brought up earlier saying so prospecting and, and mine, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now far be it for me to tell a young lady her business but this isn't really the best place to get into all that, I'm going to be honest with oh, you. Oh, is it not? You know, sure, you may have heard things about Willard Trust and the mining business here but uh Let's just say that uh, working conditions are not great. You don't tell anyone else I believe that. So oh, I'll bet never. Well, is there anything else you could tell me about this this whole area? I've never been here before, and I don't want to get in any trouble. Oh, you don't want to get in any trouble? Well, then, you know, keeping your head low. Trying to stay out of any idiot with an insignia like mine's on them. That staying out of their way will do you... Uh, good service and of course getting on the good side of people like that too is also very helpful you know don't want it to my own horror again but you know having friends here is quite important well i love making friends so surely though you must have heard that this kind of town's pretty dangerous well how dangerous is it oh well i mean I'd say that a good amount of people that live here occupy about half of any bounty board you run across in the valley, including the big one at the top. Oh my god. <gasps> Stay a little bit more informed if you're gonna come around these parts, because I tell you, you do not want to get caught by the wrong people. Absolutely, I would never. Well, that's just crazy. I didn't realize this place was so dangerous. Oh, well. Well, thank God I met you. Oh, shoot. I'm uh, as even-tempered as they come, Buzz. And even at the end of the day, I'm just a um, big brute, I guess. Well, you're mighty kind for giving me all this information, helping me out. Little old me. Of course, because if you decide to stay around in town, you know, wouldn't mind sharing a drink. You've been a very nice conversation. Oh, I might have to take you over for that. As you two are sort of talking, learning more about Willard's Rest, learning more about the things that are happening here, the mining conditions, the train coming in and the quotas that are ramping up, we 
shoot up the stairs into a little private sitting room where, you know, there is, of course, um, like a lounging chair in there, and there is a bed in there as well. Um, there are nice kind of satins that are hung from the ceiling, giving this room a very nice red aura to it, um, as kind of uh, giggling to himself. Uh, the, the man sort of looks at you and says, uh, you are not like many folk around here, let hmm. me tell you. In a good way or a bad way? Well, I can tell you this, you are at least nice to look at. <laughs> um, listen, partner, I, uh, I do have a little bit of trouble understanding why, uh, why anyone would want to come through Willard's Rest at this point, though. I will say I am just glad for nice company. <laughs> well, I heard the mining's good. And I have some personal business I'd rather not speak about. But I think that you'd understand that, right? Oh, I do. Secrecy is uh, one of my specialties. <laughs> um, he looks and says, Oh, if you're getting into the mining business, I don't know. Uh, miners come here all... They don't exactly live the most luxurious of lives. You're better off rolling with O'Donoghue. Really? Who's that? You don't know? Mm-hmm. No, never heard the name. Yeah, well, he's the leader of this here town, living right up on Fort Calamity. He's uh, kind of a big shot. Comes mm-hmm. down to buy his subordinates drinks throughout the night. Leaves town to rob and take from anywhere nearby. Comes back with... Gold, weapons, etc. Don't know where from, but uh, notorious, I think, is the word that comes to mind. It's a bit of a surprise that you don't know too much hmm. about him. Well, say I'm new around here. <laughs> Quite new. New to the valley or new to the town? Yeah, yeah, both. So, uh, big shot, right? Big shot. How do I go about signing up for this then? Well, I guess you better prove yourself then, you know. Make your way up to Fort Calamity. Go through whatever test he's got lined up. Although, not like it's too rigorous. The people here, they really ain't too bright. They really (laughs) ain't the cream of the crop, as it were. We all have our strengths, right? You'd think that. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, just already with your conversational skills, I can tell that you are a shoe in If you wanted to join, you could ask the lieutenant. She's downstairs right now. If you wanted to uh, sign your gun off. You know, I might do that in a little bit. I got time. Certainly. Um, you see, as he's being a little more flirty now, you know, the hands... Are, are, are starting to like just you know, sitting in his lap <laughs> yeah exactly and caress starting to sort of um, be a bit more romantic mm-hmm. in a sense and, and then a fade to black and, then a, <laughs> and, and if we are fading to black here this is going to be hilarious because um, information gathering wise uh, here's how this is going to work go ahead and yeah roll your your any skill you want that would be best for gathering information in this case in okay. your particular situations <laughs> so tell me um, what you're doing i'm gonna use sway i have two dots in that sway and two dots in that okay go for it this is a fortune roll so there's no risk to it okay. it's just if you succeed you succeed if you fail you don't i got a six six that's three, three sixes, sixes in a row wow. okay fantastic. Oh, um, i'm gonna roll read read go for it Listening into the crowd, you're listening into everything that's happening. I got a four. Four, that's success. Okay. I'm going to roll sway as well. Okay. And I got two dots. Two dots. Go ahead and roll for it. Five. Five. Okay. So, there are questions in the top right of your character sheets under gathering information. Everyone gets to ask me one question and I will just answer it for you. Nice. Straight up. Um, depending on what it is, you know, there are some things you may already know, like, oh, who's in charge here? Well, <laughs> we can probably guess who's in charge here. So go ahead and take a moment to think of your questions, and then everyone go ahead and ask me. If the, none of the questions on there look appealing, then go ahead and just ask me any question, and I will try my best to answer it for you. I want to ask, who is the most law-abiding? law-abiding the answer you would get to that, listening around the saloon. This town 
is hot. You hear stories, you know, asking Annabelle about like, is there a sheriff around here? How does this, you know, these are gang members, like how are they just walking around, things like that. Um, Annabelle would tell you that like sheriff's been run out of town years ago and there hasn't been a sheriff since. They've definitely sent people to act as sheriff, but every last one of them has been shot, banged, dragged out of town, or just scared away. Something along those lines. So there is no law abiding besides the citizens here who abide by the law of power that the O'Donagan hang, uh, gang has over them. Where are they vulnerable? Where are they vulnerable? So talking to the lieutenant about this, it gets a little bit dicey. Sort of, you're, it kind of slips out in conversation some things. You learn a little bit that this particular lieutenant, she's not too happy about the current situation. She says that the way things are running, O'Donagan's getting sloppy. That he's got, you know, the, more, the, the drunker she gets, the more it turns from flirting to more just mm. her complaining mm-hmm. about her boss. That O'Donagan's getting sloppy and that he's looking to fulfill some big quota by the end of the week and that if he can't, then, you know, he he's, he's going to be real upset that this deal that they've got with some big folk are going to is going to fall through and that you know right now they've hired on a bunch of people but with trying to keep the miners in check trying to keep the town protected from the monsters that reside in the nearby forest trying to and trying to get enough people to guard the train that's going to be coming in this week they're kind of surprisingly shorthanded they've got a lot of people that are kind of scattered around the valley and right now their full forces aren't at home they're at least not all concentrated in one place and then the last question chris and my question is gonna be what do they want most so talking to your courtesan um swaying the conversation out exchanging drinks you know you he kind of speaks up like well i heard willard's rest is the number one source of hellstone mining this side of the painted valley and so we got the mines working all the time selling it to the highest bidders i heard that there is a big buyer coming in on a train that train apparently new addition here and there new technology we only really see it for shipments you know we had a whole bunch of took a lot of work to get a train out to Willard's Rest which it could have been under better circumstances but apparently uh, O'Donagan's riding out on that train to meet with that buyer somewhere in the middle you know about big city you know with the, there's a big city which talk one? about really beautiful full of I mean, there are a lot of big cities around here. It's that, that Moonlight City. Oh, yeah, I heard about O'Donagan's going to be meeting some buyers out there. Really? Yeah, there's a train station out north, but it's reserved for, you know, from what I've heard. And I am a bit more well-known, you know, mm. conversational. Mm. From I've heard that it's a pretty big thing that he gets to ride out on it, because usually it's for official type folks right, only. he's a big shot. He is a big shot. Right. Yeah, he's making a deal. He's riding that train through the forest and making a deal out there. So, I heard that all these quotas and nothing, they are all to get as much Hellstone as they need to load that train up for that deal. Hmm. And for an hour of conversation or other things pass talking. <laughs> the lieutenant, she at some point is like, oh, shit. I'm getting called back. She just kind of like perks up for a second and says, listen, I'm going to make my way back for calamity. But uh, listen, if you do end up going through with this mining thing, you can find me in the southern mines. So... The Southern Mines of Fort Calamity. Just uh, asked to be assigned there and uh, take care of Oh, well, that's mighty kind. Thank you so much. Of course. I hope to see you there. 
Very nice to meet you, Miss Charlotte. She gives him a little wink. Uh, she looks at <laughs> you and just kind of... And then... <laughs> stomps her way out. As you all are conversing, she leaves. There's another... That pushes right past her. And right on schedule. You see a pair of well-worn boots, riding chaps over dark trousers, short leather jacket over a button-down shirt stained with the orange dust and dirt of the road. She pulls a red patterned bandana over her face, covering a chiseled jawline. Dark skin and piercing amber eyes still evident. And to match, hidden as best as she could under that hood, she pulled back to her field, pointed her crystalline horns, a gleaming and jagged orange. Her hat hangs from her neck. And as the door kind of shuts behind her, everyone inside goes silent. You can hear the, the rattling of spurs slowly making her way up to the bar. She leans back, putting both her arms over it. Waiting just for a moment. She looks at the bartender and says, A beer, please. If you would. He is frozen for a second in fear as he just kind of shakily pours from the tap of beer, slides it over before it is sort of drunkenly caught by a figure that just kind of walks up and slams his hand on the bar, catching it for Now, I was under the impression that we ran you out of town, bounty hunter. She looks up at him. Oh, no, actually, for her height, (laughs) she looks down at him. Toothpick in her mouth, she just kind of spits it. See, that's the thing. I don't stay down easy. Now, we could start something. Guns a blazing. Taking this whole place up in bullets. Or, I could enjoy my drink. Which of those sounds more amenable to you? There is a sort of tense atmosphere in the air. Everyone has their hands on their holsters. Except for her. Her eyes dart around, looking for her allies in the room. She looks towards you, Charlotte. To you, Xander. Can't seem to find Devlin. <laughs> <laughs> but assumes that he'll be ready. <laughs> now you see, now that you're here, uh, I don't think we can let you go. <sighs> Why can't it ever just be easy? And there is an imperceptible movement into her coat. She stretches up and flicks her wrist down as there is a sudden explosion of smoke into the saloon. The queue is here. It's time to start some trouble. Hey, yo! 
Charlotte, Xander, you two are acting. Who wants to act first as you immediately just hear coughing like (coughs) there's this smoke that has taken up the entire first floor. And you hear a as you hear that man just his head crack against the bar and he hits the ground. What are you two doing? Xander would look at Annabelle and be like, now, Miss Annabelle, I need you to get somewhere safe because what's going down here isn't going to be very good. And I need, I, I can't let a little lady like you get hurt. Okay, you don't have to tell me twice. You stay safe too, Mr. Xander. You seem like nice folk. Uh, she says as she kind of collects her things and just kind of puts the, the trays over her head and dashes off. As far as she can, coffin as she's making her way through. You would see someone sort of drawing their gun to try and fire into the smoke somewhere. Um, what are you doing? Xander would, he's gonna, he's gonna take a big breath and he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna roll up his sleeves and <laughs> he starts to roll up his sleeves and he, you know, he's stretching out his neck a little bit and he's like, I didn't want to resort to this so soon as he puts on some brass knuckles. Oh hey, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> And he goes up to the one that's about to fire the gun. He's like, no, I wouldn't want to do that. And then as he does, he's going to try to just like choke slam him to the ground. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. Okay, give me that roll. I guess it's brawl, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, go for it. Give me your roll. This is a risky, great effect roll. A two. Hey. No. You swing out and you're able to connect. You do actually connect hard into like try and ch- choke slam someone you uh, the, the gra- brass knuckles go across the face you feel the crack underneath them as he hits there's like Ugh! um but as that person goes down you are now a target as another person's like what the hell and pulls up a gun pointed at xander charlotte you see this what do you do oh my god thank you so so fast all right and i'm gonna hop on to the bar and I'm pulling my gun. I'm like, can y'all stop fighting? And I'm going to shoot my guns up into the sky. And I'm going <laughs> to... Like, oh. Okay. <laughs> Two gunshots ring out into the air. What are you trying to do <laughs> One of them here? shoots up the floorboards. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually exactly what happens. You are, you are in busy. a situation... <laughs> You're a little busy, Devlin, and all of a sudden you hear two gunshots. The first shot's fired as a bullet comes through the floor. (laughs) Oh, shit, I'm late. (laughs) (laughs) Your partner's like, oh my goodness. (laughs) As your partner's trying to cover up, Devlin, you are, tattoos on display are late for work here. (laughs) A little bit. You just fired. You kind of catch everyone off guard. Um, What are you doing? The first person who looks at me funny, I'm going to point my gun at him. You would probably see that Xander is, like, at gunpoint right now. Okay, then I'm going to point him at that one. All right, you point it at that person who is kind of still through the smoke, not really sure what they're seeing. I'm going to go, hey, hey, you! Attention turns to you. Uh, He's trying to keep an eye on Xander and trying to keep an eye on you at the same time. I'm going to shoot, but, like, right next to his foot or something like that, like, real close to him. Make a roll. What is that? Um, I think that's sling probably, right, for you? Yeah, we'll do a sling. Go ahead and make a sling. Kind of gunsling here. You're doing like a trick shot right now. Four. Four. You <laughs> fire into the ground. It's, whoa, whoa. Um, well, I don't want to hit you yet. He turns his gun to you as you shoot at him <laughs> and is going to get ready to fire back. He actually does this. Fire a shot off at you. Um, it's going to wing you in the shoulder a bit unless you'd like to resist that. No, I'll take it. Okay. You have one harm uh, winged shoulder you would write down in the little harm box there. Your employer walks up and just bashes him in the head with her revolver. And says, now, listen here. We're kind of in the middle of things here, so it's best not to negotiate and just to start swinging oh, or shooting. Oh, all right. So hit him. Hit him, please, <laughs> as uh, your employer dashes back into the smoke, um, picks you up off the ground and says, you here to keep fighting, Big Phil? Yes, ma'am. I, I, I promise I, I will be on my game. Woo. Okay, good, <laughs> because I'm paying you quite a lot to be here. Um, as uh, it says, cause a ruckus when you're ready to go out the back door onto the horses. Got it? Oh, I got it. <laughs> 
Okay, Devlin, you have had a bit of a rude interruption. Um, as you, I'm I have hurriedly get my clothes on, and I'm gonna throw some gold at this gentleman. I'm gonna say you should probably stay in here, maybe get under a bed or something. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Just hide. All it was, right. It was really nice to meet you, Mr. You, Devlin. You as well. Uh, he's, he's, Goodbye. He's crawling under the bed. <laughs> Devlin, are you walking out like how, how many I've how got, much clothes do you? Clo- you got, got all your clothes on? Well, I'm talking about like like the chest tattoos out or not. Uh, but anyways, continue. Chest tattoos. I mean, they're uh, they're generally out. Very nice. So okay, I'm running out. Um, Door kicks open. You see that this smoke has risen, and there's just smoke all over the saloon, blocking everyone's vision. As you uh, three are there plan is in set to cause a commotion as much trouble as you can and then as soon as the smoke settles you're gone and out of there what's your moves um, i'm gonna try to hit as many people as possible i'm gonna okay. get the i'm gonna get the workers to get out of the way <laughs> out of the way okay and then Xander's gonna make his way to the back. He's gonna he's gonna start heading towards the horses. Head towards okay. So you're Clear dealing the with the hitting people. Go ahead <laughs> and give gonna, me a give I'm gonna try to shoot as many people as possible. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead and roll like sling. <laughs> <laughs> She's so excited too. Damn. But yeah, as soon as you're given full permission by your employer mm-hmm. to start shooting, you are like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. Okay. It's not also not hard for you to get people out of the way. Yeah, They're not gonna resist shout, that roll. Yeah. I'll just shout at them. As I make my way down the stairs. That's a two. You're getting shots off. <laughs> firing. Um, people start firing back into this gunfight through the smoke. As you hear bottles <laughs> shatter behind you as you are fully, like, dual-wielding revolvers. Just <laughs> having to reload every now and then. Uh, you see um, somebody just runs up and tackles you to the ground. And it's just kind of like trying to get their like a, a their repeater, like a long rifle in your face to shoot. Yeah. Uh, Xander, you see this as you're making your way up back. As this person's like fighting with Charlotte to basically point the gun directly at her head. And it looks like he's going to try to fire. Uh, Xander's going to go up and be like, didn't your mama ever tell you not to point a gun at a lady? And he's going to take a swing. <laughs> take a swing. Go ahead and make a roll for me. This is desperate with standard effect. You also can I take a devil's bargain? You want a devil's bargain? Yeah, I'll give you a devil's bargain. Uh, devil's bargain is this. So far, you've done as best as you could for keeping cover and such. You know, m- many people have been kind of thrown off guard, and so they're not entirely sure who's punching and shooting. They could get maybe an idea, but you blend it in for a pretty good time. If you take this devil's bargain, this this person is gonna know your face. They're gonna be able to recognize you going forward. Alright, I'm taking it. Okay. That's four. It's four. <laughs> yeah, the brass knuckles come by and crash into this goon's face as he hits the ground. Um, For flavor, as the as it comes in contact, you see his veins like light up with amber, like fire. Ooh. And it just goes to his hand. Oh, shit. You you hear like a like a searing sizzle from the brass knuckles as this guy's and is just slammed to the ground. Charlotte, you're down there. Oh my god. Nearly shot as the repeater was right in your face. Ooh, thank you so much, Xander. We need to get up and get out of here. All right. Uh, you two begin to make your way out towards the back. Devlin, what are you doing as you're getting people out? Um, um, your path is starting to be blocked by people who are don't recognize anyone or just swing it. It's just like chaos in here, right? It's chaos down there currently. Alright. Um, I'm like, I think the part of the plan where we needed to make a ruckus is complete. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So I'm gonna do a fun thing I can do, which is uh I can turn into a shadow. Very nice. I'm gonna get real close to the wall. I'm gonna put my back to it and then my whole body just dissipates into it and you just see the outline of me as a shadow you back up into the wall as you are getting people are running for cover wherever they can running out of any exit that they can find um O'Donigan gang members are firing into the air firing at each other hitting each other like beating each other down as they're trying to find 
a loose patron that is quite literally weaving in and out of the crowd, just punching and shooting her way through. You are able to make your way and just sink into the shadow as you slip down the stairs, around the back, and our shadow on the wall as the ruckus continues. Seeing Xander and Charlotte pushing their way out, um, you all are able to is, uh, make your way out. Is my employer out as well? Your employer is still fighting. What the hell <laughs> your, is she doing? Um, your employer is still fighting. She's got the money, so... <laughs> she's gritting her teeth, fighting, shooting, um, and as soon as the smoke's starting to clear, you see her sort of holster her guns and begin um, hoofing it back out, to, out of the back um, as she pushes out the door, making your way to a predetermined rendezvous spot um, you can hear people out front and get the horses, get the horses. We're, we're under attack. God damn it. <laughs> As, uh, you hear like horses neighing and being, um, unhitched from their posts. Um, you see off towards the edge of town as you are all running the horses that you all have as you're able to hop on. There is another figure waiting on a horse for you there. Um, wearing a hood as well, covering overalls with a rolled up long sleeve shirt underneath. Wide brimmed hat uh, is also around her neck, um, and her hair is escaping from underneath the overalls. Like a waterfall, just kind of flowing. The, the, the beauty mark on her face, there's a water genasi with a stern look that says, You're late, okay? Ruckus caused? Good? We're all good? Ruckus was really caused, yeah. Then let's ride. Go, <laughs> go. <laughs> As a mess in there. your employer hops on the horse, laughing to herself. Um, as you hear it, yeah! you all are making your way down. And there's a bit of a chase here as I'm going to make a clock. Um, you need to shake these people. You need to fill out uh, four little four little success things here before they hit failure. Um, or else it's going to be real tough for you all. As already on your tail out of town as you're making your way through the hills, you can see a group of individuals on horseback one riding a massive horse that charlotte you would actually recognize um she doesn't recognize you right now but uh you in your kind of i suppose cloaked forms for yourselves um but you are all riding outward as you hear from behind you gunshots down the horse trail what are you all doing to try and shake them xander is going to try to look around and see if there are any obstacles that he can like like push a branch down so that the horses trip or something like that or take a path that's like too hard for them sure what do you want to use for that um I want to use either read or survey either of those would work fine but I'm going to use just read because I have more dots sure <laughs> so let's read the situation and see what would be best it's five five you're able to see that there is a rockier path that you could go down that would be much harder for them to follow you on. Um, the only problem is is that it'd be a little bit harder for you all as well. Do you want to take it? Why don't we go down this road right here? <sighs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Let's go. The horses are diverted down this path, and there are several of these people that try to turn quickly to follow you. There's this narrow kind of cliffside down the hill and you see a couple just go tumbling. You see like, Aah! as like people are falling off the side, their horses can't keep up. But that larger one is still there. Um, as you see this, upon this war horse, this minotaur woman reaches behind her back and you see materializing shotgun. Damn. As she's getting ready, uh, she doesn't notice who it is, but she's just going to start firing if you all don't do something to stop her. So what are you doing? I'm going to turn around on my horse and I'm going to start firing at him. Okay, make uh, some gunslinging shots for me. This is risky and standard. Risky standard. Six. Six is a success. <laughs> As the shotgun is cocked and loaded, you can see that there is this sort of greenish energy collecting around the barrel about to fire. You turn around just and you hit the shotgun in her hands 
throwing it off balance as she can't aim. God, God damn. Um, trying to fire at you all. That's another success for you all. Um, and they're still behind us. They're still behind yeah. you, following at a decent pace as things are getting a, 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 as things are getting a bit tense here as you're weaving down this narrow cliffside path. Okay. Uh, Devlin, is there anything that you are doing to try and lose them? Yeah. I was like, God damn it. And I'm going to use some magic. I'm going to use a tune to try to... You can name a spell that's in D&D and we can like call it that. But yeah, a tune is just catch-all magic. Like everything magic. Um, I think I'm going to do a little pass without a trace. I'm going to make this really stealthy. Sure. Yeah, go for it. Go ahead and roll in a tune check for me. Five. Five is uh, success with a partial consequence. So there's another success for you as you all feel covered in this shadow. You can see like, like the slithering of snakes around you as shadow wraps around your horses. And at this point where the sun has already begun to set, it is almost as though you are already enveloped in darkness. Um, the consequence of this being that it doesn't lose everyone as you all begin to kind of split off. Um, that one large lieutenant is still falling behind and is readying a big shot as you see from her hand just this this sort of orangish green flame alight and she just kind of loads it into her shotgun pointing it down at you all. This is going to be a desperate roll, whatever you do, because what this next spell is going to hurt. Can I pull out a Molotov cocktail? Yes, you can. Get in there. Yeah, go ahead and mark it down off your inventory if it's there. Um, unusual weapon is on there, so I just that figured. is an unusual weapon. Yep. <laughs> you pull a the strongest drink that you ordered, mm-hmm. um, with a rag already set into it. Uh, what are you doing with it? I'm just going to quickly like stumble and pull out my little match and I'm going to light it and then I'm going to I'm going to throw it at him. Okay. Uh which skill whatever skill you think would be best here? Could be a, a sling technically cuz you're slinging it at them. I'll sling it at him. Can I use story to tell to tell a story to motivate my my friend here and giving them some some extra yeah you can do you have a little story about molotov cocktails yeah. or horse ride horseback ride i'm like making it and i'm like this is just like the a- time <laughs> when, I was, when i was young and i made a molotov cocktail one time and I, re- I threw it at my friend and i accidentally threw it a little too hard and i realized that if you throw them really hard that it hits them in the face it blows up even harder okay so really hard <laughs> 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 a molotov cocktail all right so, 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 so i just do so i should blow it really i, I throw it really hard yeah just throw it right in their mug okay and it worked for you increase yeah, it worked the- for me oh, everybody, thanks increase Increased effect. It goes from desperate standard to desperate great effect as all of a sudden you feel motivated by the, the story of... The, the... Thanks, friend. All right. Uh, any other things that you want to have here? Devil's Bargain. Push yourself to get some grit, lose some grit. Or someone else losing grit to help. Um, um, I would lose some grit to help. Lose some, some grit, grit for me. Well, me. I'm like, everyone shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You cross off one grit then. You get one extra dice. So what do I? how many dice do I get? Then? You get three at this point, right? Well, what did I get oh, from? Did you... I have two in sling. Oh, I'll, yeah, yeah, four for that <laughs> motivating story. Very nice. <laughs> Very motivating. Very motivating. Sure. Go ahead. It's got great effect. Six. Yeah. Oh <laughs> That'd be you... Really... you roll that, you roll all ones. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So, you all are rushing on horseback. There's one enormous horse, and you can see screams and whispers of infernal power all pouring into this shotgun as hellfire is looking to pour loose as she takes aim take an aim right at the center to hit all of you you are just getting the molotov cocktail together light it and whip it backwards just a pellet of hellfire of screaming devilish skulls flying out towards you are all caught by one very strong bottle of whiskey. The 
it shatters and envelops the horse and the rider in flames as they are blown off their horse, blown backwards, and just kind of hit the ground on their own, on the ground. She says to herself, Oh, God, not again. This <sighs> She just <laughs> cries shut, and you down the path, shrouded in darkness. <laughs> she died again. <laughs> Sam. Sorry. Like, who did that? You ride for another hour before you can be sure that things have settled down. Resting up at an old abandoned shack that you are using as your headquarters for this particular mission. The horses settle. Your employer and her partner off their horse. Bring y'all down. Say, you did mighty fine work out there. Already earning you a good half of the pay. And if you are uh, satisfied with that, you're free to go, but job's only half done at this point. She looks at all of you and says, But if you want to see this through, I did pick most of you because you've got some kind of bone to pick. Hmm. So, choice is yours. I've got the agreed upon amount here. First half of it. And if that back there was a little too dangerous, then, um, well, we can leave it at that. I'm just getting started. Good. I'm afraid I have no other choice. So, I'm in. Uh, if you're in, I'm in. I'll follow you to, to the pits of hell if I had to. <laughs> <laughs> I look, I look at you weird. <laughs> like, what? She looks kind of quizzically, y'all. Well, then, she says, putting the money, the satchel, kind of. Um, well, then, we stirred up quite the hornet's nest, and I think that Denton's going to come calling. I give us about a day before we ride back in and answer him. Hmm. What do, what do we do in the meantime? Make peace. Make peace in any way that you can. We've got a bit of a fight ahead of us. She says. You see her sort of look and her partner sort of sidles up as she begins to walk off on her own looking off now that the sun has set and the moon is starting to peek out the stars in the Painted Valley. are beautiful. No light pollution, nothing to obscure them. They shine down on both of them and all of you in this valley. And Adela looks, says, Are you sure about this? You have, we can turn around, give him the money and go. And Bonnie O'Donigan looks back. They're willing to fight through hell with me. The least I could do is return the favor. <sighs> Until I just sighs. You are such a fool. <sighs> That's why you love me. 
says as she walks down into the shack. Bonnie is missing a knife. On the bar of the saloon, it's jammed there. A note. Pierced through, stuck directly under the wood. The message simple. I told you I'd come back for you. Hello there, listeners on all platforms. My name is Christian, and I am the Dungeon Master slash Game Master for the Strings of Fate. Please forgive me if there's a slight echo as I am in an office right now slash demiplane, depending on where you are in the break lore, and there's a lot of echoey space in here, so my bad. But with that out of the way, allow me to welcome you to the Ballad of Bonnie O'Donoghan, a Strings of Fate side quest. You may be asking... What is a side quest? Well, here at Strings of Fate HQ and in our main story, there are a number of NPCs and characters that have their own stories that we really can't explore too much in our main game because we're all focused on what Soph is doing. And we'll check in on them every now and then, but we really want to do more fleshed out stories with them. And that is why we are doing these little one shots that explore their narratives, their character arcs that have been set up, and allow the players to act as side characters that they design so that they can play as new people. This is an arc set up by the first four episodes of the Strings of Fate podcast, a storyline that I thought they could explore, but obviously they went a different direction. And so we get to explore it now in our fun little one shot. This is the first episode, of course, but episode two is actually already out. If you are a Patreon subscriber to the Strings of Fate Patreon, then you have access to actually listen to the second episode of The Ballad of Bonnie O'Donoghan. Episodes three and four have been recorded, however, and we will be announcing those release dates a little later down the line. For now, we are very, very excited to be exploring these characters' stories using these side quests. Um... For this side quest in particular, I am using a Blades in the Dark hack, a Forged in the Dark game called Fistful of Darkness. I'm not using all of the rules because they weren't all relevant to the story that we were trying to tell, but I will do a quick explanation of the rules now for those of you who do not know what is going on. Basically, players will roll a pool of d6. Uh, 1 to 3 equals failure, 4 to 5 equals partial success, and a 6 is a full success. And when they fail checks, they incur consequences, which they can resist using what we call grit. When a character is out of their grit, they are permanently out of that session. Quick and easy explanation. I fully recommend the system. It is very well done. Fistful of Darkness is a fantastic game, and I fully recommend it. You can find the link to it below. 
Usually I have a long list of sponsors if this is your first break with us, and that's totally fine, but today I am just going to be talking about the Strings of Fate Patreon because that is what we are pushing right now. Why are we pushing that right now? Well, we have a lot of changes coming up soon. We all here at the Strings of Fate all work full-time jobs alongside the podcast, so editing and getting things done can be quite difficult, but it is worth it in the end just because of the narrative we're putting together. So the best way to support us in this endeavor is through subscribing to our Patreon. That money goes directly towards improving the show, paying the crew, including social media people that are doing all of this work for us uh, to help promote everything that is happening right now. And it will go directly towards upgrading the equipment and eventually renting out a space for a studio so that we don't have to play in a dining room. I like to read out the names of honorary bard patrons. That is the $10 tier in the breaks, uh, as well as access to early art. And these one shots will all be through the Strings of Fate Patreon. So you can head over there at patreon.com slash the strings of fate in order to figure out the details for yourself. Now, here are just a few of the $10 patrons that made this possible. Thank you to Sparrow, Bug the Beetle Bard, Obsolete Goat, Orion Arthur, Maika, Nirja, Cat Parker, Rin, and Ash. Thank you so much for being subscribers to the Patreon. I will let you all get back to our little adventure here, but if this is your first time joining us, please enjoy the show and come check out the main story when you're done with this one. For the rest of you, I hope you're enjoying it. We have a lot of fun things in store, and I'm really, really in love with this group of characters. So please keep an eye out and take a look at our Patreon. Thank you so much. <laughs>